Okay, let's get right into it. This video is on making material networks in Katana. So with materials, Katana doesn't have materials on its own. Like you might be used to having Lambert One or your standard Fong materials in your 3D application. Uh, Katana doesn't really have that. Materials and shaders are all provided by the third party renderers. So uh, I've had experience with V-Ray, Arnold and Renderman in Katana. There's a few others like 3D Light, Mental Ray, a few others that are uh, lurking around. Um, but uh, all have a very similar way of implementing their materials into Katana's graph. So the way that Katana talks to these third party renderers is what's called network materials. So we're going to be using those today. Um, I'll just uh, point out that since the last video I created a camera backdrop here. This is my uh, camera Alembic that I had before. So just know that I've brought in a, a camera and made a backdrop for that too. So I was just going to select this one, this one with shift and then press M. Get my merge node and uh, just make a dot as well. Place that down there just so I can keep it going down. Sometimes you'll use a dot just as a stub, just as the bottom node so you can keep it flowing down. You can hit control um, and grab as well. Oh no, sorry, it's, it's nuke talking. You hit full stop while you're hovering over a cable to create a dot as well. So you'll see me as we, as we go just neatening up the graph and doing that. It's a good habit to be in. Um, okay, so I'm going to create a simple network material from scratch uh, just to show you how it works. Um, but I might actually show it on my other screen first. So here's a setup um, in RenderMan uh, that I want to show. So this is the log in the background of the scene from uh, Megascans. Uh, so here's a Pixar surface shader with all our textures connected. Um, get too heavily into this because if, if you've used RenderMan it'll be fairly normal. But we've got displacement, we have um, some stuff for AOVs, diffuse, uh, normal map, roughness and specular connected in. So we have these shading nodes that are up the tree from a network material node. This is in a group, but then that comes out and feeds into our graph. So the network material is sort of like the interface for RenderMan or V-Ray or any, any other renderer. The network material node is the interface for it to connect. We add terminals to a network material. So if I add a uh, displacement terminal, it gives me a port here that I can connect Pixar displacement nodes to. If I create a BXDF terminal, it allows me to connect shaders that I've written to that, or, or built-in shaders to that connection. And all the other things that your renderers support um, show up as, as uh, terminals as well that you can create, like co-shaders, or uh, you can create lights in this manner as well, but there's a a different system for doing that that's more user friendly these days. Um, so that's just a bit of a, a look at what one is before we create one with you. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start creating one. So I've created my network material node, so just tab NM, up enter, and uh, we've got to add some terminals first. So I'm going to press E on this one, we go add terminal BXDF. And you'll see there I've got PRMAN BXDF. And I'm going to call this grub uh, material uh, PXR. Oh no, that's my network material, sorry. So I'll connect that into the tree, like so. So I just tapped M and then drag the merge node over. If that's annoying you like it is me, just flip them around. Okay, so above this is where, and you'll, you'll see, actually, you'll see now if I view this node, you'll see I've got a material in here now, and I've got grub normal map that we could assign to objects. It's not going to do anything yet, but we, we could use that. So in this area, I'm going to bring in my textures. So I'm going to hit tab, and the node we need for that is the PR man 
shading node. So this is one I always use the shortcuts for, PSN. PSN, enter. And we're gonna need a few of these. Um, so I can copy paste nodes just like so. Um, uh, but first I'll just go grub, diffuse, and I'll set the node type. So with this shading node, what this is, is a sort of like a, a mega node. Uh, this has all of the render man nodes in it. So you see there's a large list here. Um, every render year you work with, um, there's a V-Ray shading node, there's an Arnold shading node. They're all the same sort of deal. Well, we have a node type slider, and then we select, like I'm gonna select PXR texture. You can search here, by the way, to asterisk text. We'll just show all the stuff to do with textures. Uh, that one. And then it converts that node into a PXR texture node. So, and from this point onwards, this upwards from the network material is just like working in, in materials in Max, Moto, Maya, Hypershade or whatever. It's the, the same, the same attributes that you'll get in Render Man in other applications. So just finding my textures, give me one second. I was hiding in a folder called textures. Uh, grub. Um, base color, and I'll just choose my text. So I've previously converted these to .tex files. They don't auto convert like you might be used to in Max or Maya. Um, you need to manually do those. Um, so that's fine for now. I just need to linearize that. And what I need in the middle here is another PSN shading node and convert that into a PXR surface. This is my standard PXR surface shader and uh, all the attributes that you'd expect are here. So I'm gonna call this node grub underscore PXR. So how these work, we click on the little arrow, we see all the available outputs. I'm gonna choose RGB, so we're a diffuse map here. Connect that in, and I get the big rollout for what we connect it to. Diffuse color. I'm gonna copy paste that node, because that will allow me to press E, change it to something else, like the spec, and choose the specular path up, but you get the idea. Um, so we rinse repeat, uh, connecting all these different uh, connections in. Uh, that's primary specular face color. Um, things like displacements and normal maps are different. Oops, um, PSN, but it's exactly the same as when we're working in other apps. So we need a, a normal need a PXR normal map node and we can feed a texture into that. Or I think we can just select it now in the file name we can. Um, cool. Connect that in and that's gonna go into our, our bump. Uh, but yeah, sometimes we have other nodes that go in, but there's plenty of resources and tutorials out there for render men in general. A lot of the Katana specific render man knowledge I have is just from watching like Blender and Maya tutorials for render man. Um, so the, the attributes and the way you connect things are very, very similar apart from this network material. So that's mainly the, the um, you know, the stuff I wanted to convey in, in this video is it's yeah I don't, don't want to do a full render man tutorial as such it's more showing you how third party renderers interface with katana so this is grub normal um, and then I'll wrap that up so I don't like to use backdrops for these because we end up with lots of materials so I use groups so for groups you just select make a big selection and press control G that makes this a group node that I can then edit and then I just call this grub group and, uh, and then I just start stacking them up much like you saw in my other material panel and we can put all them put all them in a, in a backdrop eventually so my grub uh, will be here uh, my grub material is now in here and will work once we apply it 
there's a little bit more work to do before we can render and apply that so we'll get on to that shortly so that's it for now for creating basic materials and feeding them into our graph and basic material networks but hopefully uh, from a lot of a few of those things that I've shown you'll be able to go through find all the nodes that you're used to with the renderer that you're using and recreate some some shading effects um, that you have um, while we're on this though I wanted to just add a, another bonus tidbit to this is that these networks get quite big when you've got complex shaders sometimes this ends up a lot of nodes um, and when you've got a lot of materials it can become fairly um, repetitive creating lots of different shader networks like in any program but uh, we can quite easily automate that for example I've, I've made a macro here called PXR surface and I create these in, I plug them in. I've got one I use for Substance uh, and one I use for Mari that has sort of slightly different outputs. Um, and I've got parameters here. So I just have a single node. I plug in my diffuse roughness, specular normal. I've got scale and displacement scale, and it's all set up to work. Um, I want to do a bonus video on how to make custom nodes and um, things as well at the end. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to show is that you can really, really speed up your work in Katana by owning macros and stuff. So we'll come back to that, but that, that's a big part of shading as well. It's quite common to have tools to help you bring in large amounts of materials on top of what comes out of the box with Katana. So that's basic materials and shading setups in Katana and RenderMan. There's much more to it. Um, but I hope to show you a lot more as we go through the videos. So thanks, I'll join you for the next video where we're going to have a look at the Collection Expression Language or CEL in Katana and we're going to use that for material assignments in our scene. Cool.